I was browsing around the internet this morning when I saw a section that caught my eye and I was curious to know if I could recreate this look with Generate Blocks. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can set up a section just like this. I'm gonna give you the custom CSS you need to copy and paste to recreate this. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm also gonna share a snippet of PHP that will allow you to see all this custom CSS from the backend editor. So let's go ahead and dive in. This is the section we're talking about. It has a little offset background and a border. You can see they're using it here and they use it again further on down the page. So let's jump in and take a look at how we can recreate this with generate blocks. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a container. We're just gonna give this a little bit of padding around it for some breathing room for our design. Inside of that, we'll add another container and this is gonna be the container with the border around it and the offset background. We'll go ahead and give it 60 pixels of padding. We'll set the inside Z index to four and we're gonna give it a custom class here because we're gonna need CSS to target this. Inside of that container, we'll add a two column grid. We'll put 80 pixels of space in between it. And on this left hand side, we'll add the image. On the right hand side, we're gonna add a heading and the text that goes underneath it. This part doesn't need much explanation. We'll go ahead and grab some similar looking fonts just so the end result looks something like what we've seen in the inspiration site. And we'll go ahead and set this column to a vertical alignment of center. We can go ahead and save this page now and jump into our CSS. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to write all the CSS inside the customizer, but we will go later and put this in our child theme so we can see all those CSS tweaks in the editor. So the first thing we need to do is grab that selector that we gave our container and we need to set its position to relative because we're going to have to set some things as absolute position later. Next, we're going to start setting up the background color. We're gonna use the same class, but we're gonna use the before pseudo element. We'll set the content to blank. We'll set the position to absolute. We'll add a width of 100% as well as a height of 100%. We'll set the top to two rim and we'll set the left to two rim and this will give us our offset. Now we need to give it the background color. I'm gonna use a variable that's inside of my child theme And looks like we have a problem. Ah, I did not spell relative correctly. You have to spell things correctly with CSS. It's funny like that. Lastly, we'll give this a slight border radius and I think we're done with the offset background. Now we'll jump in and start working on the border. So again, we'll target that same class. This time we'll use the after pseudo selector. The content will be blank. The position is going to be absolute. We'll give it a width of 100% as well as a height of 100%. And then we need to give it its position, which is going to be top zero, left zero, and now the border. So we'll do border, four pixels, solid, and we'll use a variable I have set up again for the black color. Now we'll add a little bit of border radius, a little bit wider than the one inside of it, just so they look nice together. And like that, we're done with setting up this look. Now, one of the problems with setting up CSS like this is you don't see it in the backend editor, which can be really confusing why you're not seeing something that should be showing up. So next I'm gonna show you how we fix that. We're gonna hop in here and go into code snippets and add a new snippet. Now this PHP is gonna be down below in the video description so you can grab it and copy and paste it into your project. All this does is enqueue the style sheet into the backend editor. Now to get this to show up, what we need to do is add all that CSS into our style sheet. So I'm gonna go back into the customizer, cut all this out, and then paste it into my child theme style.css file. We'll go ahead and give it a comment here so I know what it is later when I go back looking for it. It's always good practice to do that. 
We'll update this file now and we'll go see if it's all working. We refresh it on the front end and we should be able to see that all of this is still working just fine. But let's go ahead and take a look and make sure that it's working inside the editor. We'll navigate back to this page, open it up in the editor, and look at that. All those styles are coming through into the editor now. You can see if we remove this class from that section, those styles disappear. And if we add it back, they come right back. This avoids a lot of confusion when you're designing later on. Of course, this was a really simple tutorial, but hopefully you found a few new little tricks and hidden gems inside of it. I love looking around at websites for different kinds of inspiration and then coming back and seeing if I can recreate that inside of my tool stack. So if there's any sections you've seen out there that you'd like to see recreated with Generate Blocks, let me know in the comments below. And while you're here, go ahead and hit a like and subscribe on this video. We really appreciate it and we will see you in the next video.